So today we're going to be looking at the Radiolink RC6GS V2 and I've got to be honest I was really not keen on doing a video on this radio. Uh, Radiolink did reach out to me a couple of times and I kind of ignored their emails uh, and the main reason for that was because of this old handset that I have the uh, RC4G and uh, as you can probably tell by the horrendous pile of dust sitting on top of that screen this guy doesn't get a lot of use. It kind of just sits on the shelf. Um, it's just a bit of a paperweight, really. And we'll talk about that and the comparisons to this one a little bit later on. But what made me change my mind and actually review this uh, handset was a video that I saw from RC Dude 81 Now, I'm fully aware that uh, you know this radio is doing the rounds on YouTube. There's a lot of creators out there that have got their hands on one of these. But I saw RC Dude 81s video and uh, it kind of made me change my mind. I think he presented it really well, and the radio looks as though uh, Radiolink actually did some significant improvements to it that made it worth me having another look at it. Because, you know, as much as I love my Futaba and my Spectrum, um, you know, it's always good to sort of see alternatives out there and see what other companies are doing. And I think this one is actually worth uh, kind of checking out. So without further ado, I'm going to be showing you what you get out of the box when you uh, receive one of these. I'm going to show you what car I've got these hooked up to and how I've hooked it up. And then, uh, well, you know, I'll show you some running videos and so forth. And uh, I'll come back and close this off with my uh, basically initial thoughts on the handset uh, from using it so far. So here's everything that you're going to get out of the box when you receive one of these. Of course you get the radio itself, they also give you a lanyard which I think is pretty cool. This is for those of you out there who like to go down to the local racetrack and you're up on a driver's stand and you're a little bit afraid that your radio might get knocked off the driver's stand. There's a little loop in the back here, you hook up your lanyard in there, you wrap that around your neck and then you're less likely to drop your radio from 3 meters up. They also include a little low voltage adapter thing, so ideally your battery goes in here, this goes to your... Um, uh, ESC and this guy plugs into the receiver which gives you a live voltage reading on your radio. It's a really cool idea that they've included this although I don't know too many people that will be using this exact setup. Uh, you might want to copy what they've done here and kind of create your own which is what I did and I'll show you that in a little while. Of course you do have the user manual they've included that as well. You do uh, of course need to know how to read uh, Chinese which I believe is the language that they're using here or you can flip over to this side and actually read the English part which will make a little bit uh, more sense and probably save you some time in learning a second language. So the manual is actually pretty good. They do, go, they do go through quite a number of details there on how to set up the gyro and all that sort of thing. So uh, do read through it. it, it is important. And then of course they give you three sheets of stickers. All of them are the same. Um, and you can go absolutely nuts decorating your toolbox, your radio, your fridge, or um, maybe the room of one of your siblings that you don't like. So really cool that they've included that, and uh, I think that's something that you know a lot of other manufacturers that don't give you that many stickers. So that's cool. Now for the radio itself, and before we get stuck into this guy, I do want to kind of bring out the old one because I want to talk a little bit about why I stopped. Uh, using this radio and why I was so hesitant about reviewing a new one. And the deal breaker for me, you know, there's a lot of things about this radio that I don't like. I mean, I don't like the fact that it has a collapsible antenna, which the new one still has, which is still annoying. Um, but the ergonomics of it, mainly the trigger, is what kind of broke the deal for me. And that's why it's got so much dust on it, because I just don't use it anymore. Um, so let me show you here. You can see how much gap there is there between the back of my finger and the actual trigger itself. And that creates a little bit of a problem. You know, you're trying to do backflips, you're trying to race and you're trying to time everything that you do. You've got that little bit of a gap. That's really not ideal. You know, th those milliseconds do matter. And then on top of that, the way that the trigger is designed, it's almost like I have to push up and I, I can't push forward because if I push forward, I, my finger actually slips out and it slipped out a couple of times. I had this radio hooked up. I think the first time I used it was on my Creighton V1 when I had the Leopard motor hooked up to it and I had the trenches and that really nice red body and I took it out to the BMX track. I was going nuts with the car and a couple of times the, the finger slipped out of the trigger. Now at the time I didn't really notice why this was happening but it wasn't until I sort of 
bought it home and I had a bit of a closer look and I've gone, ah, this thing's really not very good. I'm not happy with this radio at all. And by that time, I already bought some receivers and I used the radio in a couple of other cars, but ultimately, I just removed all of those receivers and uh, the radio now just isn't used with anything at all. I haven't connected it to anything. So now we move on to the new one. And not only does everything look so much better and so much flashier than the old one, but when I put my finger in there, you can see that the back of that trigger is constantly making contact with the back of my finger. I still feel that they could have made this a little bit more rounded and dipped a little bit more um, because it still feels like I may still slip out. But so far, so good. I can tell you that uh, I, you know I've already used the radio and it's fine. I, don't, I haven't had that problem. I also feel that I don't have to constantly push up as much as I did with the other one. So everything kind of, they fixed that problem to the best of their ability. I still think they can do better, but it's a big step forward and definitely not going to stop me from using this radio. Now, as I said, they've also changed the look of it completely different color. All this black chrome they got going on here looks fantastic. The foam wheel, it just feels really nice. The entire radio just feels so much better than the old one. There is one downside and that is that they're now using uh, six double A's as opposed to four, but uh, you can remove the tray and uh, put in a rechargeable battery. So that's always a big plus with any, uh, you know, kind of multi-model memory radio. So uh, without getting into too much detail here, I'm going to show you the first uh, kind of video um, to kind of draw a bit of a comparison here because the footage that you're about to see is actually not me using this radio. The reason why I'm using this footage is because I actually wanted to do a, a video on the Creighton V4 and the new motor that I got uh, in that car. But um, I had a bit of a problem with the receiver that I had in that car where it, I think this little kink here somehow, if my camera will focus, I got a little kink on the antenna and I started losing range and the car started going all crazy. And in the end, I've just gone, okay, well, I can't finish this run. And I really didn't know what to do with the footage. So I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna show you that footage it's not going to be with this radio, it's going to be with my Futaba radio, but you'll see at the end that the car starts acting a little weird and uh, ultimately we'll come back. I'll show you how I've hooked everything up on that car and then I'll show you the final bit of footage uh, where you'll see me running with this radio and then I'll give you my final thoughts on everything. So, let's get to it. Alrighty, I'm a Creighton V4, stock servo, stock ESC, uh, with the Rocket or Surpass Hobby uh, 4092 1650kV motor running a 17 tooth pinion and we are on 6S I have my T-bone front bumper and T-bone uh, rear wheelie bar you can probably see there I had these, I think I had these on my V3 Creighton from like a year or two ago and I sold the V3 Creighton uh, I think it was either earlier this year or late last year, I can't remember now. And um, I just transferred all of that into this car. And uh, oh my god, this car is amazing. I'll tell you what, like, speed-wise and everything, um, I think the dips on this are all standard. Look how easy it pops wheelies. Um, I'm pretty sure the dips on this are all standard. I haven't touched them, as far as I can remember. Um, what else? What else can I tell you? I think that's pretty much everything you need to know, really. I've got the tow line body on there. That's the brute, the bash armor body. Um, yeah, let's go on some big jumps. The speed on this is about the same as the EXB Creighton with the um, Hobby Wing Max 6 combo in it. So top speed's about the same. Uh, I will have, this car will feature in the next RC Speed Week that I do. But if you want to see how fast the EXB is, check out the, uh, the channel for on the latest RC Speed Week that I did, which I think is number 22 from memory? 22 or 23? Can't remember now. 
and uh, yeah, that'll give you an idea. It does hit triple figures, so it goes definitely goes goes very well on success. <laughs> this thing's mental. All right, let's take on some bigger jumps. Oh, almost landed on that. If that had landed on that on that pit, that could have been bad. That could have been the end of the chassis. And it's off. <laughs> yeah, it just turned itself off. So she's all good. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. What's it doing? Come on. Uh oh. Something's going on. I'm. I don't have steering. Hang on. Something's up. Something's up. I have no throttle. I got no power. All right, we should be good, hopefully. Um, it was acting a bit weird, I don't know what was happening there, but some of the cables were coming out of the motor. So maybe the motor was arcing and the whole thing was freaking out a little bit. I don't know, very strange. Oh, no, 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 no. Something's up. I'm losing signal. The motor is hot. Nah, the car's veering off on its own. Something's going on. I don't know if the, if the ESC can't handle the motor all that much. Maybe that's what's happening. I'm running a Futaba radio, so there's no... Yeah. Nah, something's, something's wrong. I'm going to let this one cool off. We'll come back and we'll run it again. I think maybe the 17 pits might be too much for it. I don't know. Maybe the ESC's freaking out. But I'm having, I'm having some issues. The car's doing its own thing so I don't want to run it like that okay so here's the entire setup so I've got a 4092 1650 kV rocket motor I'm running a 17 tooth pinion and as we flip over to the other side uh, you can see how I've got the receiver set up now I'll show you the guts of the receiver box in an overlay because I didn't want to do it uh, kind of like with the receiver flopping around everywhere um, so I've got my voltage uh, little wires sort of wired directly to my uh, connectors here they're routed straight into the receiver box and then that plugs straight into the receiver itself. And the receiver has two antennas. So it's a diversity receiver. And uh, the way I've got this set up, I've got one that kind of stands up right here. And then the other one uh, I routed through into this little antenna tube that I've sort of zip tied to the actual um, uh, tower itself. You can just see there, hopefully, if that if you can see that there so I've got it going straight through the middle of the tower and um, yeah it kind of works and I had no issues with connectivity or anything like that and it's really really good to see uh, you know a receiver that can take uh, you know telemetry voltage like this so easily and that they've actually included something uh, for you to use and get that telemetry straight out of the box a lot of the times with these sort of radios you need to buy these accessories in order to get that type of uh, feedback from your radio. So really good that they've included that. Uh, it's just a shame that I really couldn't use the one that they provided, uh, but it definitely gave me an idea to be able to wire up my own and do my own thing. And I'm sure a lot of you out there would probably do the same thing as well. So um, the other thing to mention is that in the uh, next run that you're gonna see with me using this radio, uh, the battery ejected out of the back of the car and I actually damaged the battery. And I've already fixed the battery, it's not a big deal. Um, but I didn't have enough Velcro strap on the rear of the battery here. I had most of the length of the Velcro running long ways was towards the front. And uh, I took a bit of a nasty hit on the rear of the car and uh, yeah, the battery kind of ejected and it cut my run short. But in any case, uh, the radio worked brilliantly. Uh, as I said previously, I didn't have any issues. My finger slipping out. I didn't feel any sort of lag or anything like that. Uh, the radio felt really good. And you'll see me sort of commenting on the radio as we go uh, through the run. Uh, and the car performed brilliantly. So very happy with the uh, purchase so far, but I'll let you watch the, the next running video and then I'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts on the radio. Right. We are back here with the new radio. Try 
trying out this uh, new radio link uh, radio actually my first time using it and I gotta say I'm liking the feel of it except for the fact that my car just switched off I think yeah, just switched off no biggie although annoying <laughs> oh yes save that <laughs> I was trying just to do a bit of a bit of a fast pass along here this thing's an animal with this motor by the way this thing is insane Oh my god, this thing's out of control. And it switch, did it switch off? Yeah, it switched off again. <laughs> Alright. Let's change locations here. Come on. Send it. <laughs> this thing's out of control. <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, I thought I could save it. All right, so I guess we really, I mean, it's good to see this thing getting launched, but I know we're sort of here to talk about the radio a little bit now. And so far so good I'm liking the responsiveness I'm liking the feel um, it definitely feels a lot better than the old one that's hands down huge difference ah oh, did it switch off again what is it with this on and off switch I'm liking this thing the on and off switch is annoying me though <laughs> I'm really liking the power from this car. So I'm running the um, iRun Eco. Oh. oh, bumper doing its job. Getting okay, on nose darted that one. We good? We good. So these iRuns, we sell them at Metro and they are a hard case 6S pack. They're a 5200 50C. Whoa, that got a bounce and a half. <laughs> um, and uh, that was cool. All right, yeah, we're good. And uh, yeah, these, these batteries are working wonders. I'm really liking it. <laughs> that was a little nose heavy, but lucky got it a bit on a down slope, so we're good. Yeah, this radio feels nice. I like this. I might actually get some more receivers for this. Big body slam. All right, let's launch it off the big one, shall we? See what we can break. Here we go. Here we go. This is where the madness happens, usually. Oh, oh. oh I switched off again. All right. I gotta find a way to fix these uh, sliding on and off switch issues I think there's you can hide wire him or something I don't know oh. Oh. don't you end up upside down that was <laughs> enormous sin that was huge Oh, it's off. God damn it. Whew. Okay, I'm getting a big workout going up and down this, uh, this hill. All right, here we go. Ah, oh, I wanted to do something. Oh, it switched off again. Are you joking me? 
a really good thing is that the new Armour V5 come with the, the new firmer ESC and that has a push button on and off. So this problem shouldn't happen on the new cars, but... Oh, oh. oh no. Can I get it? No, I can't get it. Um, the only way you're going to get the car to... Um, I was trying to do a front flip. <laughs> That's why I stuffed that up. Uh, the only way you're going to get the car to switch off, the new ones to switch off, is of course the batteries become unplugged. But um, you shouldn't really have that problem uh, as far as the switch goes. And it's kind of weird how I took that and landed so badly and the car didn't switch off. But then that previous jump, it landed flat and it switched off. So I don't know what the hell. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Oh, T-bone racing. Okay, maybe, maybe don't do that, Bash. Maybe don't do that. Let's just do big sends, shall we? Here we go. And it switched off. It's on the other side too. God damn it. Okay, so we have a little bit of a mishap. I think when I did that front flip and landed backwards, the battery ejected out of the tray and it got damaged. Uh, it's not swollen, like it closes up fine. Um, so it's just, I think it backed out and yeah, the casing got damaged. I might just try to glue this back up or tape it and salvage it, but I'm gonna finish the run here because I don't have the uh, stuff to do that. Um, so yeah, just make sure when you do strap your batteries in, they're strapped in correctly. And when you do have big stacks, uh, just check inside the car. Uh, make sure everything's okay because, uh, yeah, when I took the lid off, uh, one of my motor wires was starting to come loose. And I took the lid off to put that back on and saw the battery had ejected out of the tray. So, my fault, my bad. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of that. Uh, we'll finish here. As far as the radio goes, i got to say I'm impressed with the overall feel. Um, I may finish this up back in the studio, but yeah, I, I'm happy with this. Um, I think this is definitely a, a getter. If you want to get one of these or you're thinking about it, uh, big improvement over the last one. So just to close out this video, I want to give you my final thoughts on the RC6GS V2. And this is really just based on the short experience that I've had with it, using it on my Creighton V4, as you saw. Now, I did just a basic setup on this radio, set my endpoints, um, calibrated my ESC and so forth, and of course hooked up the voltage telemetry so that I could get a voltage readout on the screen. And uh, that's really my extent of messing around with it. The receiver does have a gyro built in, which I didn't hook up to the Creighton because I don't really like to use gyros on uh, bash vehicles like that. But I am contemplating getting other receivers for this and I may even install one uh, in an older rig that I have that would really benefit from a gyro and uh, then maybe do a follow-up review uh, on something like that. If you want to see maybe just a, a follow-up review uh, or rather video on just the initial setup of something like this, uh, just for the average basher, if you want to you know how you set up your endpoints and all that sort of thing, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to do a short video, maybe an RC hot tip or something like that, just to show you my initial setup uh, when connecting a new radio to an RC. So uh, getting back to this guy, um, I have to say that most of my thoughts on this are actually going to be really positive. I really like what Radiolink have done and I really appreciate them sending this out to me because as I said at the start of the video, I was a little bit hesitant about doing a review on this, uh, on this particular unit, mainly based on my previous experience with this. Uh, I didn't really like that radio and uh, this one here has definitely changed my mind. So there are a couple of pet peeves that I have that I don't really like. One of them being that they've extended the battery tray to six. However, as I said, you can remove that and put in a rechargeable you know, single battery in there. I have done that to my Futaba radios and no doubt I'll do that to this one as well considering I'm planning on getting more receivers for it. The other one is of course the collapsible antenna that they have here. It does feel a little bit 2010-ish, uh, but they are promoting a 600 meter range on the box and uh, you know they're probably going to need to have that antenna there in order to achieve that result. That's what I'm hoping is the case. I'm hoping that they just didn't get lazy and just leave that there. Um, but yeah, just collapsible antennas, you know, they tend to break sometimes. People knock them about in their, 
you know, when they throw their radios in the car and so forth, uh, when they're going out to their bash spot. So uh, that's my only sort of pet peeve there. Everything else on the radio actually feels really good. Construction wise, uh, you know, it doesn't feel as solid as some of the more premium brands, but it does, definitely doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart. Um, this little dial here, for example, is a, is a really good comparison. On the original radio, I feel like if I'm turning this and I accidentally cough or sneeze, that I'm just gonna demolish it. Um, it just feels so fragile and so cheap. But on the new one, it feels really nice and smooth, like silky smooth, really, really nice. Uh, the trigger feels nicely weighted. Uh, you know, as I said, I like the way that they've redesigned that and it's making constant contact with the back of my finger. The wheel feels really good. I really have no objections as far as how the radio feels in the hand and uh, you know, as far as controlling your, your RC, I think you're gonna be pretty pleased with it. There are a lot of switches on here that you can program to do whatever it is you wanna do. I know there's a lot of scale guys out there that will use you know, uh, winches and LED lights and all sorts of mechanics that you can put on some of those scale rigs. And there's a lot of switches here for you to play around with um, that will allow you to do that. There's another one here, there's another one there. So there's heaps of little things that you can do. The on and off switch is back here, nicely secluded and out of the way. You got the little loop here for the lanyard, which a previous one didn't have. And then of course the menus, I'll just show you how these go on. Uh, sorry, I've got to turn the radio on first. Um, you press these two together and then you can get into the main menu and then you just scroll through and adjust what it is you need to adjust until your heart's content. So there's a lot of things here that, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with any of this, you will need to uh, kind of, you know, read the instructions um, to sort of have a good understanding of what all that does. But as I said, if you just want a quick video to show uh, what a basic setup is on, on the average bash car, let me know in the comments and I'll do something like that in the future. But for now, I'm gonna leave this video here, guys. Thank you all for sticking around this long. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, check out the video description for more links to my social media pages and uh, any relevant links, the links that I have to this video as well. Thank you again, and I'll speak to you all next time.